Hey guys, Eric Sargent, General Manager at Martin Toyota in Noblesville, Indiana, and today I'm going to show you a triple battery setup um, using um, uh, two uh, AGM batteries, um, a lithium uh, LIFE PO4 Battleborn 100 million or 100 amp hour battery, um, ARB uh, uh, box that we've modified, and then I'm also going to show you um, the Manager 30 and an inverter. So before we get started, uh, let me walk around the car real quick, and we'll come right back to the back. Um, so as far as electronic devices that we've added to this vehicle, um, we have a 12.3 inch Alpine uh, drop down DVD player screen that has uh, two uh, HDMI inputs. One is wired to below the center console in the back of the climate control for the uh, middle row. We have another um, HDMI port that we've installed underneath of the inside the center cubby with an extra USB port. Uh, we have a ham radio. And then we have also have installed a 12.5 gallon long range fuel tank with upgraded hoses and fittings. And then also um, we have an ARB Lynx system to control the devices mounted in the headliner. We have an ARB twin air compressor on a sleeve battery, on a sleeve uh, 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 air compressor mount. We have a group 31 auxiliary battery in the front um, that is reposted and uh, rewired so that the group 35 is your crank battery. The two batteries are connected uh, with a Red Arc uh, BCDC 1240D uh, DC DC component with an extra uh, uh, Anderson uh, solar panel input connector right here. We're using a 200 amp SBI to, so the batteries can jump each other if the crank battery goes dead for whatever reason. Um, we have the hood lights up here with white and amber and off with an override pin trigger right here so that if you accidentally leave them on and you close the hood, then you have the option of uh, not running your battery down inadvertently. Um, and then coming back here, where what makes this a, kind of an interesting setup here is that the customer needed to have a, a six-seater vehicle, so we wanted to have a we wanted to have a system that would be nice to store all of the electronic components with uh, having a super clean OEM look and finish. So what we ended up doing is we bought um, an ARB uh, drawer system. Um, we just one side, of course, so that this seat, um, the jump seat on the passenger side, does fold down. We bought the system um, and then we needed the extra space for the inverter and for the Red Arc battery for the uh, the Manager 30 uh, BMS. And then we wanted to use something, we wanted to use a Red Arc Red Vision, um, which isn't available in the US yet, um, but it's a component that's going to add a lot more functionality for off grid uh, uh, power usage. So, what we had to do basically is cut the ARB drawer system, kind of uh, to cut 12 inches off the back of it create a file cabinet so that we can uh, and custom mount so that we can mount um, all the three components the 2000 watt inverter with the battery management system and then the red arc red vision system all vertically uh, we had we installed uh, fans to cool all three of these um, which i'll show you that here in a minute and how we control those fans and how the temperatures are regulated um, on the fly um the the hard wiring is right behind this post right here and then um, we also have a 1000 uh, amp or I'm sorry, 100 amp hour uh, Battleborn LIFE PO4 uh, battery for back here as well. <clears throat> so, kind of put that back real quick. And oh, and there's also a ham radio that's that's mounted back here as well, right there. Let's take that back for a second. Close it up. So the the the, the actual drawer system itself, um, we uh, again chopped off 12 inches, rewelded the box back together, grinded it flat, had it powder coated black so that everything matches OEM uh, finish in terms of the sheen. And then we recarpeted the whole thing with, uh, with black uh, matching OEM carpet. So the Red Vision, um, uh, because we have the Manager 30, uh, obviously incorporates additional functionality over just the normal DC-DC stuff. So we can do shore power. We have additional solar connections. This particular one, we added some uh, dual 4.8 amp USB ports, another 12 volt outlet here, and then some Anderson connectors right there, mini Andersons. And then you may be thinking, well, what is the what is the, the uh, what does the Red Vision actually do? And so that's what we're going to show you today. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn the unit on. So right now we're at 100% battery on all three batteries. Um, so it's a switching device first and foremost. Um, it's a lot easier to use. The, um, it's kind of very similar to use, I guess, to an ARB Link system or maybe a Switch Pro. But it's all it's an LED screen. Um, you can see that we have six switches right here. We have a compressor. Um, which I just turned on and the airbags are full right now, so you didn't even hear it. Um, I, I'm going to turn on the television, so the um, the uh, Alpine screen should turn on momentarily, and there it goes. 
there's no signal to it because the um, uh, because the Apple TV is not turned back on. So I'll come back over here and I'll turn on a couple more devices. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Apple TV and the auxiliary power that we have for additional HDMIs. So um, at, while the Apple TV boots up, we'll go ahead, I'll, I'll flip, actually it's back on. I'm going to turn it back on. So the HDMI port, the HDMI port should be turning back on to the Apple TV here in just a second. It looks like it's still booting up. So we'll come right back and show you that turn on. It takes a couple seconds. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and turn on the um, the Airbnb Link system. So we have the Links controlled, the uh, Alpine television set, um, the air compressor, the Apple TV, and then the auxiliary HDMI ports. Apple TV just turned on if you want to shot the video back over there. And also the Airbnb Links. So both of those devices are both turned on. The card is off at the moment, but those have been turned on through the Red Vision switch panel. And then if you want to come back here, I'll demonstrate how some of that stuff works and how you can monitor the voltage. So we also have um, some additional reverse lights right here. Um, I'm sorry, these are your rock lights. If you go down to your next screen, then we'll have additional switches. So we also have um, your reverse lights, which are back here, I'll come back here. So that was an override for the reverse light. They are triggered into the reverse lights. Um, and then we have additional components. We have shore power, we have additional lighting, and we have a fan system that, that cools the, um, the actual physical devices, the inverter and such in the box. You have two temperature gauges up here, 78 and 80 degrees. That's monitoring your fans or monitoring your temperature um, that's actually behind the system, right back here. Temperature sensors are inside the file cabinet for the electronics. And then also there's computer fans that are back there as well, which, I've had, which I have turned on currently. So right now, um, the car at, with the load capacity with everything on right now, which is the compressor, the Apple TV, the links, um, the rock lights, the reverse lights, um, you know, all the auxiliary power switching, all that's turned on and this car can run for 17 hours on the current load. <clears throat> Whenever you turn off additional components, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off some stuff here. You can see that on, on the fly will, will, will tell you um, an updated uh, estimate of how much load, how much time the system will have before the batteries die based on the default setups or the override over the overroad setups that you've that you've used it tells you your amp draw that you're running right here and again you have three different menus so right now we're on the second menu our switches i'm going to go ahead and shut off some more stuff and then the car right now um, because we're really not drawing much of anything it's 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 adjusting currently to how many days the car is going to sit before the batteries die <clears throat> so that'll continue to climb until it figures out exactly how many days of, of uh the power you have um, this Red Vision is actually really cool, other than just being a, the ultimate switching device and, and being kind of dummy proof in terms of how much time you have uh, while you're off site, off grid, or camping. Um, tells you all the all the temperatures. Um, it also has additional um, gauges for like water levels. So if you have onboard water, um, you can use it for knowing exactly how much uh, water you have in your container at any given point in time. Um, so this controls um, all the devices that we just talked about on this screen and on page two. Um, you, you can also control all these devices through the ARB link system um, from the uh, driver's seat uh, if you're doing it while you're driving. So um, this is just kind of a kind of a quick intro to the Red Arc Red Vision. It's the first one that we've installed. Um, it's not actually in the U.S. yet, but I think it's coming soon. Everything that we just kind of showed you can be controlled through um, through the iPhone app as well. Um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, Eric Sargent, Ed Martin Toyota, Noblesville, Indiana. Thanks for watching. Hit thumbs up if you like it.